Adventure loves him. Evil hates him. And mystery surrounds him. One of the world's classic action heroes is coming to the big screen in Paramount Pictures, The Phantom. The Phantom's journey has followed a fascinating path. From his comic strip creation, to international fame, to serial stardom in the 40s. Sound the drums and tell all the jungle tribes, the Phantom is still a man who never dies. And now a major motion picture. This thing is gonna rock you, you know, it's gonna like freak you. The legend of the Phantom lives on as he fights piracy, cruelty, and injustice. He was a sort of original superhero. In terms of comics, he was probably the first. Seeing the Phantom, you know, just him in his costume, and the white horse, and the wolf, and the skull cave, he's a total mystery. This is the kind of film I always dreamt of being in when I watched films. I Sixty years after he was created, the Phantom is still the most widely read superhero comic strip in the world today. A character both unique and enduring. Translating the Phantom's ultimate adventure to the screen is director Simon Winter of Free Willy and Lonesome Dove. It's action adventure with a twinkle in the eye. The Phantom movie is really the originator of all those kind of cliffhanger serials and uh, the kind of comic that inspired the Indiana Jones movies. Looks like I got a plane to catch. Starring as the Phantom and his alter ego, Kit Walker, is Billy Zane. It's a very uncommon hero. You know, the Phantom has no superpowers. You know, he is quite human and does bleed, but he loves what he does. He really genuinely likes it. Screenwriter Jeffrey Bohm of the Lethal Weapon series and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was attracted to the essence of this character. He's a classic, like Batman and Superman. It, it stood the test of time. The Phantom is an old-fashioned comic book hero. He gets by on his wits and his wiles, his physical uh, ability. And I think there's a nice element of fantasy here because he lives in a uh, fictitious jungle. He rides a white horse. He has animals for friends. Watch him, devil. He moves. Eat him. The true inspiration for this movie came from the very first Phantom comic, which introduced the character, introduced his world, and was set in the 30s. The Phantom was among the first comic strip heroes, predating Superman and Batman. He was created in 1935 by Lee Falk, who was inspired by the heroes of classic mythology. As a boy, I loved the stories of gods and heroes, Greek, Roman, Indian, Scandinavian, and the Phantom came out of all that. He's a very physical man. He's very strong, and he follows the oath to combat piracy, cruelty, and injustice. The legend began 400 years ago when a small boy witnessed his father's savage murder at sea by pirates. Washed ashore near the Bengala jungle, the boy was raised by natives and swore an oath to fight for justice. That boy became the first phantom, creating a sacred tradition passed down from father to son over 20 generations. According to legend, he's immortal. He's been around for four centuries. Believing the Phantom to have survived the centuries unchanged, he was dubbed the Ghost Who Walks. I've done a thousand stories of the Phantom over a period of 60 years. It's in five or six hundred papers around the world. There are about 25 languages. And it has a daily readership, which amazes me, of 100 million people every day. In these 
these unexplored jungles live the native tribes who for generations have been ruled by a great leader, the phantom, the ghost who walks. Be very brave and strong. In the 1940s, the phantom inspired a movie serial starring Tom Tyler. No, don't kill him. Moko used thunderhead arrows, see? adventures, the Phantom confronted a number of villains and cliffhanger endings. The challenge for the filmmakers of this latest Phantom was to recapture the magic of the original comic strip. Good, okay, print that. A key aspect involved casting the right lead actor. For Billy Zane, destiny played a role. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Phantom is the only comic I ever collected. I read my first, and I collected late, you know. As a, an adult, I got into him. And I think if there was one role I was ready to play, it was this one. It's pretty hard to imagine anyone else as the Phantom, just because he looks so like the character, and he's worked really hard to get himself in the right physical shape, and you need to be in great shape to even dare to put on the costume. The physical aspects of the character appeal to Zane. He spent more than a year preparing to play the role. I studied the cat-like movements and the comics themselves, you know, which have very distinct poses, just really great lines, and I tried to put as much of that body language into the film. You've got something that belongs to me. His physical regimen included two to three hours a day of weight training and aerobics, plus some more unconventional methods. The iron ball is an ancient Chinese secret. It's like a shot put, basically, that if you're doing a strike or a hook, it forces you to use your hips to support the ball and keep your balance moving in a very fluid motion. It's adding definitely a degree of confidence, you know, for one, the stamina that's going to be required. You know, le leaving bushes, leaping into saddles, you know, over rocks, you know, doing some, definitely some hair-raising stuff. The Phantom must rely on his physical prowess to battle the villains, along with the knowledge passed down by generations of Phantoms. Living up to his heritage is a daunting task. He's got big boots to fill. It's like 20 Phantoms came before him. And what's interesting about this particular tale is, you know, this 21st Phantom has to prove his mettle, has to prove himself to the ghost of his dead father. You turned over one of the skulls of Tuganda to the same brotherhood. Have you any idea what it means if the brotherhood gets control of the skulls? They'd be invincible. And stop them. You're the only one who can. The skull of Tuganda. The Phantom's nemesis is the evil Drax, played by Treat Williams. Drax, he's on this mission to find this skull of Tuganda, which once these three skulls are, are combined, will give him absolute power. 121E, take one. Action! It's happening right here and now! Show me the power! He would do bad things with it, the Phantom would do good things with it. And the fun thing is that it's an adventure for the villains as well as the heroes. This is the chance of a lifetime. Where's your spirit of adventure? The thing about Drax that's interesting is I think he has this elegance and charm. I think there's a kitchen sink quality to this guy. I've got Howard Hughes and Cary Grant and Clark Gable and everybody else who wore a mustache and had some, some style. It's been a great deal of fun. Oh, it is beautiful. I used a little toothpaste on it. It polished up so good. Drax's key ally and femme fatale is the provocative Sala, played by Catherine Zeta-Jones. Sala's part of Drax's team. She's the pilot, and she's adventure-seeking, highly sexually charged, I think. I bet you're better than good. There's an old jungle saying, never point a gun at someone because it just might go off. Fast hands. I like that on the man. I mean, she's after men. <laughs> Sex. Tie her up. I've played a lot of goody goodies, so this is a nice change to be able to have some fun and to, uh, you know, to play the period as well, to play 1930s New York. I mean, just the scale of the production was awesome. 
The action of this story brings the Phantom and his alter ego, Kit Walker, to the streets of 1930s New York. To transport the audience back in time, the filmmakers recreated Manhattan on a massive scale. This movie has been an extraordinary experience for me. I grew up watching those period films late at night when I was a kid. And it's almost as if I'm able to go back in time and be in one. The sets are enormous. We got to New York Street, we had 200 vintage automobiles with hundreds of extras. And that's seldom done anymore. And it's been very exciting. I'm going with you. Diana, uh, where to now, sir? Museum of World History. Well, you heard the lady. The key woman in Kit Walker's life is Diana Palmer, a socialite played by Christy Swanson. Let's go. Not so fast. Why should I go with you? Trust me, Diana. Diana Palmer, she's just very feisty, and she wants to go out there and experience life and, and have adventure. Get ready. Get ready! Well, I think she's attracted to the mystery of it all. Here's this man who's big and strong, and he looks very good in his purple tights, so... <laughs> but when, when women wouldn't be attracted to that. This is a rescue. Thanks. You've done a good job. I can take it from here. When Diana was created in the original comic strip, she was a liberated woman ahead of her time. Not only was she intelligent, but she was also a world-class athlete. She's a boxer back in college, and so they're tying some of that into this story. It makes it a lot of fun. I get to do a lot of fun fighting scenes. I was throwing some punches. One of the film's key action sequences takes place in the heart of city traffic at night when the Phantom finds himself in hot pursuit. We're doing horseback chases through traffic and jumping along taxis in Manhattan rush hour 1936. The police are after the Phantom and he has to make his escape across a busy Fifth Avenue and jumps from rooftop to rooftop of uh, cars and eventually ends up stealing a policeman's horse and galloping off down the street through traffic. Once he's on board... The challenge of coordinating this difficult stunt was given to stunt expert Billy Burton. What I'm trying to do is take this guy out of the jungle, put him in the city and let him use the jungle instincts to get him about town. I leap in on this car to a roof, to a horse. Miniature cars were used to block out the stunt. The risks were high, and timing was everything. One slip could mean disaster. Okay, guys, this is it. This is the safety meeting, okay? You've all seen it. We've rehearsed it. The main thing is if the kid slips and falls, you don't run him over. If there's any question, don't go for it. Just freeze on the car you're on. Guys, man up. Let's try it. This will be picture. Let's make ready for picture, please. Let's start the bike. Ready, and. amazing thing I've ever seen. It had that scale of kind of fantastical magic that, you know, Hollywood can produce. The chase to find the powerful skulls brings the Phantom to the other side of the world. We really wanted a fantastic contrast to the busy streets of New York where the rest of the story takes place. And Thailand is a very exotic country. It's got a stunning landscape. And also, there's a great sense of mystery about the place. Mountains shrouded in mist, and water's a most brilliant blue color, and so it helps create this really extraordinary world that the Phantom comes from. Thailand is a wonderful place to film, and has some of the most gorgeous scenery I've ever seen, but the weather hasn't cooperated too much. We're a month into the dry season now, but the dry part of the dry season hasn't shown up. The biggest challenge was the weather. We shot my last movie down here, and we didn't have one day of rain. And 
first 23 days shooting Phantom, we had 23 days of rain. Day after day, you get grey skies, and then down the rain comes, and it affects lots of things. You can't gallop horses fast over muddy ground, you can't drive trucks fast, so you're continually not being able to finish scenes. The stunt vehicles were constantly getting stuck in the muddy lowlands. And the roads to the mountain locations were nearly impassable. Finding a way through the mud required improvising miles of their own wooden road. To reach the most remote locations, the filmmakers had to trek through the dense jungle on foot. If you want the film to look different, then you have to go to remote places where everything has to be lugged in by hand. It's not like making a little intimate studio film. It's a, it's, it's a big sort of military operation. And how we got out of there alive is beyond belief, but somehow we did. One of the key jungle locations is the Phantom's mythical Skull Cave. The Skull Cave is the headquarters of the Phantom. It's like the, you know, like the Bat Cave, which of course Batman stole. And the amount of detail is extraordinary. It has a radio room. It has a chronicle room where the past 400 years of Phantoms, all their adventures are chronicled. And it has a treasure room and a skull throne where the Phantom rules from. He's got a swinging pad. The Phantom's Phantom setup is pretty tricked out. There's lots of interesting touches like Moroccan rugs and Tibetan tables and goblets and a cool fireplace. Everything's there that he needs. He's got a nice bed and all these things. He has a cushy pad, <laughs> definitely. It's very imaginative and it's, it's kind of that boy's adventure stuff. And it has a certain romance about it too. get to live a fantasy we were on this gorgeous beach in thailand white sand and crystal blue water and we got to do this running shot and we just took off in a full gallop and riding in the water splashing i was laughing and having i was just having the time of my life it was so much fun Capturing the visual splendor of the coastline led the filmmakers to remote islands offshore where the intricate limestone caves provided an additional backdrop to the action. But filming these sequences on the water presented its own difficulties. The biggest problem on this production has been to coordinate the marine unit with the aerial unit with the ground unit. We go by land, by air, and by sea on this movie and it's been really difficult. As difficult as these scenes were for the filmmakers, it was Billy Zane who would have to physically put himself on the line. I wonder how many frequent flyer miles you get for riding on a pontoon on the outside of a seaplane. <laughs> While pursuing the villains in his jungle homeland, the Phantom must enlist the aid of his animal allies. He has a white horse faithful steed named Hero. <laughs> Hero was played by a Spanish Andalusian horse, renowned for its strength and intelligence. Come on. But Hero is not the Phantom's only animal sidekick. The Phantom has a wolf named Devil. They have a really kind of savvy rapport with each other, and always coming to his aid when he needs it. Good boy, Devil. The dog's a wolf. Devil is played by a full-grown timber wolf, but unlike a dog, a trained wolf remains a wild animal. <laughs> Aggression from a wolf is possession. I've got his bone. <laughs> he wants it. The wolf was trained to go from point A to point B and rewarded with food. The key was to create as few distractions as possible. I was okay with the wolf. The only time that I was afraid was when we're galloping on the horse, the wolf is following us from behind. And if something gets in its way from here to there, like me, <laughs> if I fall, <laughs> it was just a concern. <laughs> The Phantom's sidekicks were not the only animals to be found on the set. 
In fact, it was the local wildlife that would pose the greatest danger to cast and crew. Don't ever try this at home, okay? We found the really big, large Asian scorpions. They pack quite a wallop. If you get stung on the hand, it paralyzes the arm for about 24 hours. Wow. It's a Malaysian pit viper. And then we adjusted one of the logs so we could get a camera next to it. And that was this Malaysian pit viper on there. Real chunky guy had eaten a large frog. They're very poisonous. Got some nice fangs on him. Look will get your attention. Action! Filming the Phantom's most dangerous encounters required a team of the world's best stuntmen who created some of the most incredible action sequences ever captured on film. What's really great about this film is it's really full on. There's some great transfers from airplanes to horseback. And there's the great sequence of the truck. You must have hit <laughs> I'm trying to rescue the skull and discover there's a young boy who was shanghaied into driving this vehicle across this precarious road bridge. The guy driving the truck kicks him out of the truck and the Phantom manages to grab onto the door just as the truck rolls onto the bridge. And I'm dangling from a door over this many hundred foot gorge. I climb into the truck to find him, and the whole thing goes like haywire, and ropes snap, and vines break, and the thing just starts to rotate, and it turns upside down, and the truck becomes entwined and just suspended by the vines of this bridge. Now I'm trapped in the back with the kid. It's pretty perilous. It's a very involved sequence. The special effects involved in tipping this uh, bridge over, the engineering involved was enormous. The bridge was constructed from the ground up over a rock quarry deep in the Thai jungle. It measured 150 feet across and was suspended 60 feet above the ground by four reinforced steel cables. 250 tons of steel and concrete anchored the bridge, while a cable and winch system would both move the truck into position and support it while upside down. Buried underground were the hydraulics that would cause the bridge to tip over. They've never done anything like this before in the movie business. They've built a couple of suspension bridges that I'm aware of, and none of them have ever been set up like this to flip upside down 180 degrees with a truck on it, so it's a one-of-a-kind thing. And bridge! was actually hanging off the door of this truck on the bridge 50 to 75 feet off the ground. I mean, it was very scary. If you fell off the bridge, you would be dead. That's a cut. That's a cut. Good work, guys. Very good stuff. They built an incredible bridge, but the gorge was only 50 feet deep, and Simon wanted the gorge to be more in the order of several hundred feet deep. So I knew that we were going to have to extend the sides of the canyon and make the gorge three or four times deeper than it really was. To accomplish this, the effects team filmed a 750-foot deep gorge in Northern California, which they would combine with the original footage from Thailand. We were really lucky when we shot this. It had just rained the night before, and the river was really full, so we got some really good white water here, which is exactly what we wanted for the shot. And we uh, rotated it and fit it into the bottom of our canyon and put that in. It was kind of like the final touch. Simon had seen the shot without this river in here. And when we put that in, it really sold us. It's pretty perilous. <laughs> it's like, it wasn't a good day unless there was an ice pack present, you know what I mean? With incredible stunts spectacular locations, and a unique superhero. The ghost who walks truly comes to life in The Phantom. It's been very exciting to see my people come to life. These are all marvelous actors, and finding an actor like Billy Zane to play The Phantom is wonderful. It's the kid's fantasy. This was like we're making movies. This is a movie. All right, gentlemen, nobody... Kindly pardon my error. 
I guess not. Comedy, action, adventure. It's just a really exciting film.